too a little short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> That's not saying anything negative about it. I think it made the right changes to adapt it. Um, but before we get to the Doll's House stuff, episode six was uh, The Sound of Her Wings, which introduced the, introduced the character of Death. Uh, and it was so good. It was so good. It was actually, the episode was a combination of two issues, two storylines. It's the the death issue is kind of like the epilogue of volume one of Sandman in the paperback volumes. And then the story of, I can't remember the guy's name, uh, the, that is granted immortality. Um, oh, via dream and dream and death. Um, and they meet in the bar it's, every 100 years. It was, yeah. It's on my tongue. Back. Yeah, I know. I tried to remember it for this episode. Too. There's just so many character names. I feel yeah. like I can't. Yeah. Um, but uh, that those those two stories were told in the same episode, which I thought was uh, smart, because um, otherwise you're gonna drag one of them out too long, and it'll overstay its welcome. But I thought the way that the amount of time they spent on both was perfect. The amount of like the half hour we got with 
um, dream and death walking around, following her around doing her job. I thought was great. Um, I will disclose. I, m- I mentioned it a couple times, including last week that the cl- the two minute clip that I saw online before the show aired that made me cry was the clip of her um, meeting the violin player yeah. in wherever they were, whatever country that was. Um, and it was really that that character's reaction when he introduces himself and she says, you know who I am. Yeah. And like the realization on his face and then the begging of like, no, no, not yet. Like that was, that actor was incredible. He, yeah. I thought he was so, so very good. Um, and I, I mean, that was straight dialogue from, I, I mean, most of this series, but that episode there, that death episode is straight dialogue from the, from the book. Yeah. Um, most of it was, well, that that scene was almost completely completely from directly from the book, I believe. Yeah, and they I think the the Hob Gadling stuff they changed a little bit. I I cheated. I looked it up. Hob. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I think there was a little here and there. But yeah, it was the, like most of everything we saw was pretty well lifted, yeah. if if not directly in words in spirit from the page, which is for sure phenomenal to see. Yes, for sure. Um. The I wasn't sure if they were gonna do it in the death section, the the s- sequence with the baby, yeah. um, which is absolutely heartbreaking in the book, and they did it, but they they pulled back a little bit. Okay. Because in the in the book, it's worse. Okay. You, you you spend more time with the reaction, the mother's reaction, which is heartbreaking and terrible. Um. So I was glad that I didn't have to watch that <laughs> right. happen. I was like very nervous. I was like, is this going to be, because it's also like, it, it would be hard to do that without it being too much. I think in, mm-hmm. in uh, taste wise, really, you know? Um, but I think they did it just enough to make it crush you, <laughs> but also, Oh, it um, was, not, it was weighty. Not, not turn anybody off. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought it was great. I thought Kirby Howell Baptiste was excellent as yeah, Death. I thought she absolutely. was very uh, wonderfully cast. And like I, I mentioned, I listened to Neil Gaiman on a, a podcast to talk about creation of the show and the casting process. And she said he said that she was uh, incredibly. She was the hardest person, hardest role cast was Death. And it took oh, they yeah. looked at so many people, and they needed to find the right kind of person that was like could be taken seriously but also like could be gentle when like talking to the people that she's dealing with and you know have that warmth but also have like an intensity kind of at the same time and i think she really nailed it because like that interpretation of death is so different than anything else you've seen like she's fun she's you know smiling at you she's gorgeous but she's also and she's very kind you know it's not a scary grim reaper with a a scythe which i think is what makes her such a compelling character Oh, absolutely. Um, and from yeah. someone who who didn't who did who didn't read it on the page, it was just, yeah. you know, my interpretation. I, I haven't gotten there yet. But um like my interpretation of even what I heard versus what I saw was like that yeah. take on death is very it's very unique and it's very compelling. Yeah. And uh I mean Kat Dennings does the voice on the audible yeah adaptation and she's great as well god i keep um, forgetting that cat like every time you yeah. think about it you're like that cast was really really good yeah both both casts like oh yeah in 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 the netflix show pat oswald is matthew the raven in the audible adaptation uh oh now i'm blanking on his name yep uh Gollum. yeah uh circus Andy Circus. Yeah, Andy Circus. Andy yeah. Circus as Matthew the Raven. Yeah. So both diff- very different like interpretations. I like, my brain know, was picturing Ulysses Claw, so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um in the Netflix show uh, or in the Audible adaptation, Kevin Smith is Merv Pumpkinhead in right. the uh Live Netflix show with Mark Hamill. Which <laughs> yeah. Dude. Hamill yeah, Hamill just does Hamill things. <laughs> like he's just good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, speaking of that, let's move into to, – oh, the Hob stuff was really cool, too. I thought they um, – it was a little strange that it didn't, like, go back. This, this is something that I, I mentioned on the last episode how I wanted to talk to someone who has never read the source material or never listened to the Audible adaptation. And our mutual friend and friend of the podcast, Adam Karki, um, 
loved it. Uh, he's never read it at all. He's watched the entire series yep. and he thought it was great. And he said there were times, including that one episode that we're talking about, where he thought it was over and he went to check how long. And it was like, oh, I have half an episode left. <laughs> <So> they're <laughs> right. doing like two things. Two issues. Once, in the, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but he didn't. He didn't say anything about feeling rushed or anything like that, which is what was my uh, kind of concern. And I did, I did think they threaded it through well because the story starts with Dream and Death, you know, going yeah. into the tavern to meet Hob. Um, so it like kind of bridged the two stories a little, very well. Um, and I thought that was super cool, just watching the progression through like to the '80s or you know, um, wherever. Uh, yeah, wherever. We yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was '89, right? What yeah they, what they did right um so yeah that was great and then another twist that i wasn't sure how it was going to work I, I say twist because it's unlike a regular un, unlike any other series but was inevitable when you're adapting the sandman you go from your main character being dream and then it kind of shifts in the second half of the series where your main character becomes this Rose Walker character, right. which you've only maybe you've heard her name mentioned. She's the friend that um, the woman reaches out to in uh, the diner episode. They have like a quick FaceTime conversation, yep. uh, which I thought that was cool way to like weave her in a little bit more and set her up. But still it's like, we're like, Oh wait, I thought dream was the main character of the show. Now all of a sudden we're following this other character and it works. I don't know how they do it. It just, it just works. I think they make, it's the strong writing. It's the acting. The character is compelling and interesting. So you want to follow this character all of a sudden. And they still, Dream is in it enough still that you don't feel like, hey, where's this guy that I've been well, talking about for the first five episodes? Right. And you pull the the callback to Unity Kincaid and yep. all that. Yeah. So it's, you know, there there's enough seeds planted that you're not, co- you're, you're thrown off, but you're not completely out of the woodwork. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you would... If you'd watch the first five episodes, then waited six months to watch the other five, then maybe you'd be a little bit more like, wait a second, what is, mm-hmm. who are they? You know, I don't remember that one Unity Kincaid reference, you know. Um, uh, but I think they do it really well. And we enter the uh, the Doll's House arc, which is the volume, second trade paperback of Sandman. And they do it incredibly accurately as best as they can, again, with making the changes they have to make. Um, this is where this arc is where you meet the Corinthian, I believe, for the first time. Like he's not in the initial arc of the book. In I yeah, in the book, you're right. In the in the series, um, but again, they did that's another change they made to set him up as the villain from the very beginning. Um, makes that through line feel a lot smoother. Um, so we meet Rose Walker. The in, uh, the idea of being a dream vortex, which is very comic booky, but um, they just lean right into it in television they don't question it like yep this is what's happening this is a weird wild thing and it's what we're gonna go with um they set up her whole family dynamic very well a relationship with her brother being torn apart kind of and i don't know i just did it really well and for a second uh, i i was assuming that i was like oh maybe they aren't gonna have all the people that live in that house they're probably gonna cut a couple characters there yeah nope no they don't we meet all (laughs) yeah ken and barbie and everybody yeah yeah the twins Um, and like i i was thinking maybe it'd be like you know fiddler's green and a couple others yeah right but not the full cast you probably could have cut out the twins right cut out ken and barbie it could have just been the main guy whose name i'm blanking on and fiddler's green really yeah um but no they again sticking faithful to the source material where they can uh i had forgotten about the story arc with uh, Lyda Hall and her dreaming of her dead husband, yeah. Carter, who in DC Comics is the son of uh, Hawkman and Hawkgirl. Oh. Yeah. And hmm. also, um, they don't, obviously, they don't mention that in the, in the show, but right. in the... In the series, I don't know if you remember this from the Audible adaptation, because they did do this in the Audible adaptation. Uh, But I think it's a very smart move that they had Jed, the son, being manipulated, or the brother, being manipulated by one of Dream's nightmares to think that he is a superhero in his dreams. Like escaping, giving him an escape. In the book, 
it is nightmare two different escape nightmares maliciously manipulating the spirit of carter hall to think that he is a full-time superhero there's no like waking up and going back to sleep oh okay he thinks he is the sandman um uh and then dream you know it plays out the same way dream finds out that this is happening and you know although being sympath you know more or less sympathetic being like yeah but you're dead you can't stay here so goodbye i'm taking right. my nightmares back and you know and by the way that kid is mine which you know which <laughs> happens in the in the book as well right um they, they don't name the kid in the series i don't think they talk about what his name is and they say they don't know but in the book dream yeah. says his name is daniel his name is going to be daniel he's my son i will come for him someday oh okay yeah that's a little change huh. they made but i think they the way they did it they i mean they still had Lyda interacting with the dream ghost of her dead husband, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it works. It works. Yeah. It's just so it, interacting and then some. <laughs> yeah, and then some. It just interacting feels so crazy and interacting. That, that it, yeah. <laughs> it feels so crazy <laughs> that halfway through the show they could introduce you with to so many new characters. Because like, yeah, okay, yeah, they set up maybe they set up Rose Walker and they set up Unity. Right. But they didn't set up the brother. They didn't set up anyone in that house. They didn't set up Lyda Hall, Carter Hall, any of those Hell. people at all. Uh, what's that? Hell. Hell. Was the what main was guy, the landlord. Oh, Hell. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Okay. I thought you were correcting me on somebody. That was calling someone by the wrong name. Nope. Um, uh, but they do, and they introduce all these characters in the back half, and it still works. You do care about Lyda's relationship and sudden pregnancy, and, you know, it's wild and it just really works really well um uh fiddler's green i thought was great um stephen fry's uh fiddler's green was wonderful yeah. well i'm that, trying to think about the moment, else, like, to specifically shout out but like i mean later on like the the whole the culmination arc with fiddler's green i thought they yeah. n like that was extremely well done yes yeah i agree um I I like the, the expanded role of Lucian. Um, yeah. Because in the book, well, in the book, it's a he. But he's really just kind of a background character, um, but kind of developing in the show her relationship with Dream more, making her, you know, giving her a bigger role in the dreaming, how that affects Morpheus. Like, I thought that was really smart. And, like, that's a, she's a very interesting, make her a very interesting character. Where in the book, she just they're just kind of there when he needs to be or when he doesn't need to, you know, whatever. Um, and it's a way to make Morpheus a little more sympathetic than he is in the book. In the book, he can be kind of an, an asshole. Um, like, very unsympathetic sometimes towards humans at all. Um, well, she she called him out on that, too. And she, Exactly, but that does not happen in the books. In the books, he just kind of stays that way. It's a little oh, okay. it's a while before he kind of realizes um, anything. Oh, by the way, the... Uh, for example, they I'm so I love that they hinted at this because it does set up something they can do if they do a season two. The which you don't even really know about, I don't believe, because you haven't listened to the second season of the Audible I thing. I have not, no. That the Nada, the woman that he who he passes on his way to meet Lucifer in mm -hmm. hell and recognizes him. Yeah. And he says, uh, "Yeah, they have the whole like, conversation. You, you're the one that you're the one that put me here. You can set me free." And he's like, "I haven't forgiven you yet, or whatever." Like that's some cold shit that oh, they're yeah. talking about. <laughs> You'll find out. Okay. And that uh, weaves into, you know, hopefully a season two of this show. Um, and again, points out like, okay, this guy is this guy is an asshole, or at least he used to be. Maybe his you know heart is melting a little bit now that he's warming up to humanity a little more becoming more human or something i don't know um but they do they do set up that change or him being less of an asshole with his relationship with lucian which i really like and um yeah it's great i like the scene at the end when he was building nightmares that was cool i don't think yeah. that was in the book or i don't remember it that was that was cool um and uh Oh, the serial convention in general was great. It was pretty pretty accurate to how it is in the book. Is um, it? Okay. Even like with the names and the people that are there, uh, I feel like I'm talking a lot. Do you have anything that you want to say about this? I feel like I'm talking no, man. I mean, I, okay. I'm interjecting where like it it was. 
even for someone who like had had some interaction with it and at least had heard the audio drama, it was yeah. still like a whole lot to take in and a whole like oh yeah do i remember all this shit no yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) like i think that might have happened did that happen i know there was there was like five or six times where i was just like uh maybe i'm pretty sure i remember that but it was maybe something i made up (laughs) yeah same and the the two volumes of the book that i have that are the adapt that this show is adapting yep i have loaned to a friend of mine for her to read and so I couldn't even like come down and cross reference. I was like, is this it? <laughs> I ran there? down here once. And I was like, oh, she still got him. I can't, gotcha. I can't check it out. Um, uh, but yeah, you know the, what we should, we should uh, like uh, maybe randomly one, uh, one upcoming show. We should have uh, one of, one of them on uh, either her or Adam to, uh, to like get that actual take or maybe not for this, but for something in the future. Uh, someone who's completely green yeah. on something just to get a take on it of like, listen, the two of us have heard this for years. Exactly, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, that's a good idea. Hey, we're I just pitching. That. We're just pitching. Uh, pitching segments moving forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to ourselves. Yeah, brain, brainstorming live on the air. Yeah, why not? Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I love this show. I thought it was great. I like how they did kind of set it up for a season two at the end, uh, go, cutting back to Lucifer. Right. And I did say this last week, um, that Lucifer does deliver on the promise to destroy Morpheus, but not at all in the way that you would, you would expect. And my only apprehension is that in a in a society that doesn't like or a, si- a society full of nerds that are precious about what their expectations are and get upset when their expectations are not met or they are undermined or what they want to happen does not happen. <clears throat> Star Wars fans. Um, uh, I hope that I hope that season two of the Sandman is 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 well received because <laughs> if if you are going into this hoping for a giant battle between lucifer and morpheus you are going to be mm, probably let down yeah but i think it's cool i'm yeah, sure it will be for me and now yeah. you know before before there's a season two of the sandman i guarantee you i'll have finally gotten to that part of my stack of books so yeah uh, yeah or well, well the or the audio drama even yeah, true. So, no, we'll we'll get there eventually. All right. But uh, actually, shout out to uh, Boyd Holbrook as the Corinthian because yeah, he was great. That was just there was some cold, freaky shit he pulled off. Yeah, some of that dialogue was time... just like it gives you the shivers thinking about it, and you're like, oh, that's what he was supposed to do. Good, good work, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and just like knowing. I mean, movies and shows kind of do this kind of thing all the time, but it's one of those classic things where the audience knows that this guy is bad news, oh, but yeah. the character that he's interacting with doesn't. Like, mm-hmm. he's eating, getting ice cream with Jed, and Jed's just like, this is the greatest day of my life. I like this guy. This right. guy's great. We're going to go back. He's bringing me to Rose. We're, we're cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you're just like, Ugh, that guy is no good. Don't oh, you do just like it, this, buddy. Like, just immediate tension the whole yeah. time, which is great. Yeah, so good. he's also just got one of those smiles that's just like, oh yeah, god, that's just disconcerting. Like you know something's up. <laughs> yeah, he was well cast. I love that when, when Dream finally like disintegrated him, his yeah. like little tiny skull also had teeth yeah. on his eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was great. I guess it would, right? Teeth yeah, part of your why not? Bone, so makes sense. Oh, that was great. Yeah, what a good show. Um, very hopeful that we get a season two of Sandman. Yeah, gotta say, I can't. I mean, it was, it was like the number one show in a bunch of countries. Yeah. I read last week. I think it's but, been uh, pretty well received overall. So yeah, I think so. So hopefully, you know. But at the same time, it's a Netflix thing, so it dropped all on one day, and yeah, right. everyone was talking about it for like a week, and you know. But 
you know, come this coming week, you're not going to hear as many people talking about it anymore. Yeah. So, but hopefully that's enough for Netflix. Hopefully that w- that one, you know, week and a half is or whatever is enough for them to green light a season two because because Lord knows we know Netflix needs to keep subscribers right now. Yeah. And um, and uh, Mike and Steve from Multiverse Report need a season two. So that should be reason enough alone, Mister Netflix or Madam Netflix, whoever runs you. <laughs> you're not you're not doing a great job, but you uh, you got a good show on your hands, so don't lose it. Right. That's what I gotta say. And uh, all right, you know, I would say this may be our Sandman review, but if they would like to see all of the other shoes, shows from all of the other uh, streaming services get their Indeed. fair shake, they should probably follow the Multiverse Report. Anyone who's listening, um, I agree. And you know, like, subscribe, and leave a review for us if you enjoyed what we're doing. Um, Twitch, YouTube, uh, well, YouTube when I remember to upload things. Uh, <laughs> your <laughs> podcast feed of choice. Feel free to find us. Feel free to check it out. Uh, the multiverse uh, Get a hold of us if you want to at uh, the multiverse at gmail.com. Yeah, please do. We've done, uh, we've done reactions to, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ms. Marvel and, uh, Peacemaker, Hawkeye. Yep. I think that's when we thought we started doing, uh, reactions to shows. Yeah, so. I think so. Um, yeah, Hawkeye, Hawkeye. In- yeah, some of them are wrapped into full episodes, but some of them we started splitting them out um, recently. So, absolutely, we'll and I think uh, this weekend we'll probably hit She Hulk episode one. Um, we can't. I think so. We can't guarantee we're going to carry She Hulk all the way through because there is a glut of things coming. But at least we're yeah. going to give our initial impressions for you. We will at least do. Uh, are they dropping more than one episode of She Hulk, or is it just the one? Uh, I don't know because there's nine and episodes. Will... So. They're yeah. letting this one breathe a little. Yep. Okay. All right. We're going to talk about that in our full episode. It's coming up next. If you are uh, watching live on Twitch, stick around. We're going to do our full Nerdy News weekly recap coming up soon. If not, check it out on your feed. I'm sure that's there, too, if you're not watching live. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you in the multiverse. Just got to wait for that to finish exporting.